Good afternoon, good day. Uh, greetings to our CIC, Julius Malema. Uh, greeting once again to our commissars and our fellow fighters and all the members of the EFF Book Club nationwide, countrywide, and in the entire African continent. My name is Delisi Lengwenya. My name is Delisi Lengwenya. Uh, we are going to be discussing the book by Franz Fanon, uh, The Wretched of the Earth. Uh, firstly, uh, before we continue with the book, I would also like to pass the condolences to all uh, the families who have lost their family members and their loved ones uh, due to COVID-19 and also pass condolences to Vinola Mashiho's family, uh, condolences, heartfelt condolences for her passing. And also would like to wish uh, the people who are not well, who are in hospitals, some are at home, self-quarantining and isolating because of COVID-19, may you all get better soon. Uh, Briefly now, I would like to take you through the background of the author of this book that we're discussing today, which is uh, Franz Fanon. Just to answer a question on who is Fanon. Fanon was born on the 20th of July, 1925. And uh, he was born in uh, an island of Martinique at the age of 17 he decided to go and join the army, uh, the Free French Forces, where they fought against Nazi occupation in, in France. Uh, at a later stage, he went back home uh, to finish his studies, registered at the university, and also got his uh, PhD in psychiatry. Franz Fanon was the fourth child, yes, was the fourth of the eighth of the eight children in his family. Um, we see that in, his, in, in, in a later stage, he later supported the Algerian War of Independence and joined the struggle of Algeria. And also Fanon was new for writing a very psychological, powerful psychological books and, and in, in terms of decolonization as well. Uh, but there are two very notable books and very popular books that he wrote, Black Skins, White Masks, and The Wretched of the Earth, which we are going to discuss now. Wretched of the Earth is a book that is very influential and it talks mostly of the decolonization struggles and it, give, it, it is a political justification of armed struggles against colonization. This book was published in 1961 in the last few months uh, of, of Franz Fanon's life before he passed on due to leukemia in 1961 on the 6th of December. Uh, I will go through now to the summary of the entire book. This book has five chapters and the first chapter deals with, it, it speaks on violence. And here Fanon says, he, he shows us how colonialism planted a seed of its own violent overthrow, how the settlers built a world in which they treated the natives and made them feel like animals. And they did this through violence. Therefore, the native, however, came to a point where they realized that they need to resist this petrification and, uh, and, and fight and, and, and realize their humanity because uh, we, we all know that in, in, in colonial states, uh, every state that is, that is colonized, you know, human rights are taken away from the people. They are not treated as people. They are not treated as humans. They, they, they are just dehumanized. So the settlers decided that now they are taking the fight, they are taking the struggle, and they are fighting against the, the settlers or the colonizers. Thus, they, they, they engaged in the struggle for, 
for decolonization. And initially this was meant to take back the, 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 their rightful place, that was to take uh, back their, their land from the settlers because uh, the biggest, one of the biggest reasons behind uh, colonizing uh, the, the, the other countries is, is, is to acquire land, is to take the land from the people in that country. And we know how important land is. When you are landless, you lose your dignity. Then Fanon continues still on chapter one on violence to, to look into violence in the, the international context. And in this section, he describes the international political relationship between the newly formed independent nations and the colonial powers. And according to Fanon, he points out that uh, the colonizing nations always enrich themselves at the expense of the colonies. You will remember that when, when, when colonizers come or when settlers come into a certain country to take over that country, they would usually take over the land. They will usually take every form of production in that land that, 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 that gives uh, economical freedom to the people. Uh, and the people, the natives of that, of that country are just now decreased into a state of slavery where now they are working for the settlers and creating wealth for the settlers or the colonizers. So according to Fenon, the, 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 the colonial powers, uh, they owe their former colonies reparation payments for, 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 for all the pain they have taken them through for all the, 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 the dignity that they, they stripped away from them. So that is what Fenon says in this chapter, which is chapter one, where he deals with violence. Then we would also move now to the second chapter of the book, uh, which is, it, it speaks of spontaneity, the strength and the weaknesses thereof. Now in this chapter, uh, Fenon argues uh, that the peasants we, we, we would remember that a, a peasant is a person of a low social uh, status. And he says now the peasants in the countrysides, they are more resolutely anti-colonial. They are unwavering in, in, in their fight against uh, colonialism. They are determined to make sure that they are, they are taken out of, the, of, 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 of colonialism. They are resolutely anti-colonial than leaders of nationalist parties in their cities. National parties, uh, nationalist parties are modeled in their counterparts in the mother country. They are also dominated by the middle classes uh, whose only interest and whose only main interest is not so much to destroy the colonial structure but it, in its entirety, but they are looking at simply substituting the settler. They are looking at taking the position of the master. Uh, Fenon continues to maintain that the peasants are the source of the spontaneous and genuine uprising, the spontaneous and genuine a, a, a violence that fights colonialism. Uh, they, they seek to, com to, 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 to complete the, 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 the order of, 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 of colo colonialism. However, their actions, they ought to be organized into a single national unity with a sound political program. So they need other people to come in and help them in the this, in, in this struggle against colonialism. That is what uh, 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 the summary on chapter two uh, on, on, on spontaneity, the, the strengths and the weaknesses. Then we, we continue on to chapter three of the book. Uh, and this chapter again, this is where now Fenon analyzes a class that he calls the national bourgeoisie. Uh, the national bourgeoisie, they are mainly dominated by the educated elites. They are the lawyers, the teachers, the doctors, and the colonial administrators. And he continues, continues in this chapter to show us uh, 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 the character of these, these, these bourgeoisies. 
they are people who are self-centered, who are self-serving, who are self-interested. They only want to do what, ser what serves them. So the self-interest drives them to maintain the old structures of exploitation and uh, oppression of the natives uh, with themselves at the top. That is the, 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 national, the, 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 the national bourgeoisie. And uh, Fanon says that the solution in this matter is decentralization in the extreme. When you decentralize, you, uh, you transfer authority, you take away the authority. So he says the solution to deal with this national bourgeoisie is to decentralize in the extreme. He continues to say that the hinterlands, the hinterlands are the, the, the rural areas, the countryside. He continues to say the hinterlands must be integrated with the city. They, they must be unified, they must be incorporated into the city. And he shows the post-colonial government how they failed to drive complete economic emancipation by maintaining the same political economic structures that is inaugurated by colonization. So nothing changes. Uh, they come in and they continue where the, the settlers, where the colonizers left off. Uh, they, they put emphasis on culture and not on economic freedom, which is very important if you want to give back the dig dig dignity to, to, to the people who were colonized, to the peasants, to the natives, you must give them economic freedom. As a result of the failure to bring economic freedom, they, they, they turn into, they become uh, dictators, they become dictatorial uh, 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 and suppress the masses, the masses who, who will in turn question their betrayal to colonization, to, to, to decolonization. So they they become dictators now in their parties. They come uh, they become dictators in the way they run things in that the country that has been decolonized. He also Fanon describes the conditions under which tribalism and and, and, and xenophobia triumphs uh, due to the failures of the post colonial state. Uh, because of these failures, we see xenophobia. Uh, 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 triumphing amongst the natives themselves. We think tribalism tri triumphing amongst the, tri the, the, the natives themselves due to the failure of, 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 to bring the economic freedom, due to the failure of these parties now who have decided to become a, a dictatorial to avoid the fact that now they, they are failing in bringing economic freedom after decolonization. Fanon is very adamant, uh, adamant that uh, a true state of decolonization is bringing the entire political and economic system of colonization into question. You cannot continue where the settler left off. They must be new economic policies that you take over, you, 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 you come up with to continue to empower the people who are now decolonized, the people who have been treated as animals, the people who have lost their human rights and their dignity to settlers. So when the, the part, they come in, now these new parties under, under the new independence, the new formed independence, there must be a economic a policies political and economic uh, change in the whole uh, in the whole state it, it must be replaced by complete control of the economy it must uh, uh, independent development of its production uh, productive forces instead of being a mere conveyor belt uh, or, 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 and sustaining and enriching the mother countries and we see that happening a lot in the countries that were, were colonized. Uh, we see the continuation of, of the blueprint of, of, of the settlers or, 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 or the colonizers. That is, that is the chapter, uh, that, uh, the chapter, chapter three that we have now completed. Now, as we move on to, to chapter four 
of the book. This chapter, uh, Fenon concentrates on uh, national culture. And in this, in this chapter, Fenon continues his charge against the nationalist bourgeoisie and the damage that is caused by colonialism uh, in, in, the sen in the people's senses of the past and their culture. And in this chapter, we see Fenon arguing in favor of a nation rather than a culture. Uh, he sees the appeal and the psychological benefits of recovering a people's glorious past. However, he argues against promoting a global black culture or a global black, a global Arab culture. He says that culture must be national. He also argues the fact that uh, the building of the nation should be political and economical, which will result into the, uh, the emergence of a new national culture. The, the struggle to create the nation will give rise to the national culture, he argues. And he says that to create a nation, we must start with economic and, 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 and political uh, in, uh, dependence, which must, they must never be separable. Uh, uh, we, must, we must bring the political independence with the economy together into the country or into the state that has just been decolonized. They work together. So in this chapter, he is arguing in favor. He is stating the, necess the, the, the importance and the necessity of, of making sure that uh, the, 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 na the, the nation, the economy of the nation is built and, and the, the political sense and the political consciousness of these people who have been recognized. It is built it is refreshed. They are given back that sense of ownership. They are given back that sense of, 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 of owning the, the methods of creating wealth. They are given sense of, of being conscious of who they are. That, that, that is chapter four of, 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 of the book as, 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 as summarized by, by, by Fenon. Then we, we go into the last chapter, chapter five of the book. <clears throat> In this chapter, uh, Fanon cites medical cases. Remember, the first three chapters of this book are mostly narrative. Uh, but now, this chapter, uh, we see Fanon, who is a psychiatrist, uh, he is now citing medical cases from, from, from his work, cases that he has dealt with uh, when he was working uh, at, at the hospital in, in Algeria, the hospital called the Blida Joinville Hospital in, 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 in Algeria. He uses real cases of real individuals to show how colonialism has affected the people's mental health. Uh, he, he also draws uh, from, from the encounters that he, he had seen while working with the FLN in Tunisia. So now he is coming in, 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 in an individual space. He is uh, uh, telling us the cases of the people that he has treated, he has treated as patients, uh, in, in the hospital that he used with, he used to work with people who were suffering mental disorders, people who, who, who were mentally uh, insta unstable uh, now because of, 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 of the, 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 the tortures, because of, 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 of what they went through uh, under colonialism. Uh, now he is giving us detailed cases. He is dealing with individual cases that were affected by, by the cruelty that is, that is, that is seen and uh, meted on the people, on the natives, on the colonized people when they are under a, a, a colonialism. Uh, the chapter is divided into four series. 
or four classes of, of mental disorders that uh, are met with under colonialism. Uh, he gives different examples of, of those classes and different examples of the mental disorders that he has, he has, he, he, he came across. It is here that he shows how certain mental disorders are better dealt with by placing patients within their communities instead of isolating or yeah, putting them into institutions of, of, of mental health. And he gives examples, one example that he has given uh, in, in, this, uh, in this mental disorder is a, a, a reaction disorder where he makes an example, he gives us an example of a 37 year old uh, uh, person that he, 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 he treated. This 37 year old person had witnessed a massacre in his village and that affected him mentally up to a point that he himself developed homicidal impulses. He also makes example of, 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 of adjustment disorders of people who, because of their experiences uh, or conditions that were surrounding the situation of, of being colonized, uh, they, they develop suicidal thoughts, they, they, they develop anxiety disorders. Those are the effects, uh, those are the, uh, the, 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 the aftermath of what colonialism can do to the natives or the colonized people under colonialism. The, the, the way they are tortured, the way they are treated, dehumanized, take, their dignity taken away. These are the examples that uh, Franz Fanon uh, uh, stated and, 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 and cites in, in, in this chapter. And at the end of this chapter, and then now we see Fanon discussing uh, criminality in both the colonial and post-colonial context. Uh, he shows us how criminality becomes part of the methods uh, through which natives avoid uh, to confront or the confrontation with the settlers. Uh, instead of confronting the settlers, uh, uh, instead of fighting for freedom, and building a society in which uh, they, they need to see, instead of confronting the settler, uh, they, they, they then tend to get into criminality and into uh, actions of crime. Uh, because now they find themselves in the situation of, of, of lack, they find themselves in situations of poverty, and, and, and they find themselves suffering in, in, in the spaces, the small spaces that the colonizers now put them in. Because remember when colonizers come in, 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 in to colonize the country, they even take the land from the people and give them uh, uh, small portions where they all go and stay there in numbers. So now for them to deal with such, with such trauma, they, 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 they find themselves uh, going into, into criminality uh, 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 actions, going into crime. Uh, and in conclusion, when Fanon now concludes uh, uh, the book, The Wretched of the Earth, we see Fanon making a rousing call and a very inspirational call, a call to action. He calls on brothers, he calls on the comrades, to, to turn away from Europe. He also, in his call, advises against trying to catch up to, to, to Europe economically and culturally. As, as, as he has, he, he, we have mentioned before that when, when countries are, are, are decolonized, we find that the liberation parties that come in uh, continue on the blueprint of the colonizer. They do not come with different uh, 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 policies. They do not go back to the drawing board to define the course 
of 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 the people of that country. So in his conclusion, Fanon is advising against that. He is advising against uh, the, the the decolonized nations who have now found uh, 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 their their freedom. Who have now been emancipated, he says they must not try and catch up to the to 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 Europe both economically and culturally, because now people you find them they they continue to 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 live and talk and dress like the Europeans they used to do. They continue to to do like master used to do. Now Fanon uh, Fanon is 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 is. Uh, strongly advising against that in he says instead the new nations they should they will go forward they should go forward on their own path they must now start forging their own path economically politically and culturally and he says when they do that ultimately the liberation of colonized people will benefit all humanity so that is uh, in summary the, the, the book by Fanon, uh, The Wretched of the Earth, uh, as we have read it. Now, <coughs> excuse me, we will now continue, and now we see the conceptual outcomes of the book. There are indeed uh, many and, and very complex ways in which Fanon makes the elements above, as we have seen in the book. Uh, we, we might not have enough time to, to go through all of them in detail, to discuss all of them in detail, uh, but we can summarize them into two very important concepts, which is one, decolonization, and two, post-colonialism. Uh, with decolonization, a decolonization is, is uh, the process of decolonization is, is captured into the first two chapters in the book uh, where he speaks on violence and where he speaks on, on, on spontaneity, the strength and the weaknesses. Uh, but in, that, in those two chapters, we can pick up uh, the following things that are standing out. Uh, colonization or what Fanon calls um, colonial order of things. Uh, this is the nature of, of, of colonial society. And the fact that it, it was birthed through the violent conquest of, of, of the natives, uh, destruction of their customs, destruction of their traditions, the, the total reorganization of their space and their lives. Uh, violence is, is, is central to the conquest and permanent relationship between the settler or the colonizer and the natives, which is the, the colonized peoples. Fanon then shows us that this violence is organized in terms of space. Once again, we go back to the land. This shows how important land ownership is. Uh, he, he speaks of, they are, there's this division. Uh, they, they are now in two compartments where you see a settler town and a native town, where you find townships, where there is no little or no space at all, where there is hunger, there, there, there is poverty, there is crime, there is no basic infrastructure or services. Th those towns uh, uh, they are they are barely surviving. They are on its knee on, on their knees, and on the other side you find the settler towns where these towns are, are, are thriving. You, they, they, they are uh, uh, infrastructures of every sort. There is service that is provided. Everything is given in those structures. Now those are two compartments that uh, we, we saw with Fernando in, in the first two, two chapters of the book. Now, uh, the barrier that is used to make sure that uh, these, two these two compartments do not mix 
the, the natives do not come across and, and, and come into the, the, the settler's town. He, we find that the police and the army, they, they are there to ensure that the natives stay where they are and they never mix, they never come this side of, 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 of the settlers or, or the colonizers. He describes that in the native towns, the townships, uh, people die. And it does not matter how. People die in different many ways. And, and, and the death of these natives or the death of, 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 of these people who are colonized is as good as the death of an animal. It, it, it doesn't matter it, it, to, to, to the settlers, it doesn't matter to, to the colonizer when these people keep dying like this. And Fanon shows us also how natives are organized this way because of underlying anti-black racism or the hatred, basically, of, of, of the settler, the hatred that the settler, the colonizer feels towards the, 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 the native, towards the, the colonized people. So the, 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 the pushing, the, the, the motivational factor for the settler to be able to treat the native in this manner, one of the motives is the hatred that they have for, for the natives, the, the racism, the, the anti-black racism that they have against the, the, the people that they colonize. The organization of colonial life in Africa is based on racism. And according to, to, to Fanon, racism is, 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 is violence. It is dehumanizing. It takes away the human rights. A person is stripped of his, his rights as a human. He is treated as an animal. And therefore, Fanon feels that racism is violence. It violates the dignity and, and, and the, ident the identity of natives. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Violence is a way of, of, of ruling black people. And, and thus, we see that through, the, through violence, the settler deposits a, a certain amount of aggression uh, into the lives of natives without allowing them an outlet. There is, there is too much aggression that the, 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 the natives are exposed to due to the violence, due to the hatred, due to the racism that, that is meted upon them by these, by these settlers. Uh, natives at first, uh, according to Fanon in these first two chapters, they would seek an outlet of this aggression uh, by, by the settlers amongst themselves, unfortunately, in th through three different ways. One is tribalism, the other is crime, and the other one is religion. Those, those were the outlets that were used by the natives, that used by the people under uh, 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 colonialism as an outlet uh, due to the aggression and the hatred that they were exposed to due to colonialism. Um, there are largely spontaneous outlets on, on violence. And there is this fourth outlet, which is also spontaneous, but it is, it is, it is progressive. It, it must be given a revolutionary program. This outlet is, is, is liberation. This is an, out, an outlet that the natives or the colonized people must use as a, as a way of dealing with the, 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 the aggression and the hate that they experience in the hands of, of the colonizers. Uh, decolonization, decolonization in itself must, must give birth to a political movement. A, a political movement that allows the unleashing of violence against the colonial system, the destruction of the entire colonial order of things, uh, the destruction of building of, of everything 
everything that has to do with 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 being colonized the buildings the bridges the statues etc and a decolonization has to be centered on the land we cannot emphasize that strong enough the importance of the land uh, so decolonization has to be centered on the land uh, for for its ability to provide bread its ability to redignify the native uh, hence the slogan by fenon uh, that he always keeps repeating land and bread that is how land is important to every living person so with decolonization there must come the, the a, 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 there must come la a land land must be given back to its rightful owners decolonization must never be a compromise it must never compromise with political powers in fact fenon shows how compromise is in the interest of the native middle class and the colonizers he says the native middle class's interest or desire is not to start afresh they want to simply continue where the master left off they want to inherit the positions of the settler they, 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 they their only interest is, is self-serving and they want to see themselves at the top so compromise is meant to avoid complete destruction of the colonial uh, order of things it gives birth to neo -col colonial society uh, meaning a society where you see native societies remaining in the tentacles of economic bondage of their colonizers so basically nothing changes in their lives even after the found uh, independence. Uh, compromises are outcomes that volunteer the economic exploitation of natives and the country to the benefit of settlers or the colonizers. So once again, we see the natives being compromised with if it, 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 where, where we allow compromise compromising when it comes to 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 decolonization the person who will be compromised who will still be left in in in, in the state of poverty in in the state of landlessness is the native he says once the parties of the decolonization are dominated by middle class interests they tend to betray the genuine decolonization by merely becoming representatives of economic exploitation of natives by colonizers that's all they become this is why they they, they prefer a compromise as opposed to an armed struggle because they fear that during the violence of the armed struggle the buildings the bridges the statues, the infrastructure uh, built by colonizers will be destroyed and they will be left with nothing. They, they, they do not prefer this because their dream is to inherit the infrastructure as though it is theirs. This is why the last time you see development uh, taking place in, in the native settlement, it is the little infrastructure that we see in our townships built by the colonizers. And you find that after being decolonized, there is no infrastructure or better infrastructure built in terms of houses, in terms of uh, uh, schools, uh, uh, univers universities, and the likes. That is the first uh, concept that we were dealing with, which is decolonization. Now we will move uh, on to the second concept, which is also very important, which is post-colonialism. Uh, post-colonialism, we find this in uh, Fanon dealing with this in chapter three, 
uh, with the pitfalls of national consciousness and chapter f uh, chapter three on the, which is the national conscious pitfall of national consciousness and chapter four which is the national culture in those two chapters fanon predicts that political parties and trade unions which are dominated by urban native middle class will fail to give benefits of liberation to the masses to the people, to the decolonized people, once they attain their independence. Firstly, they are a direct imitation of political parties of their mother countries or where the, uh, the, 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 the native intellectuals went for higher education. They learn about uh, these parties and they come back home to build them as they saw in the West, meaning they, they, they do not ask what is the right form of political movement for the colonial people who are discriminated against on the basis of their color of their skin. Uh, he shows how in the programs of the urban native political parties, there is a lack of economic policies. That, that, that will result in the development of the entire country, uh, particularly the, the, the rural areas. So like I said before, they, 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 they do not come with new economic policies that will empower black people. They continue uh, on, 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 on the policies of the settler, which then does not really change the lives of the natives. He shows us uh, how in the programs, um, he, he, he demonstrates that the new governments of the post-colonial countries are crippled by their desire to replace and be like the masters, the, 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 the colonizers, the settlers. They, they lack the confidence to lead their own independent programs that will lead to complete independence and complete to, to, to breaking away from the colonizers. They depend on the colonizer for uh, uh, economic policy direction. Uh, Fanon says, deep in them, there is a fear, a fear that should the masters completely withdraw their countries will go back to being barbaric, to being a barbaric or barbarism countries. So they, 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 they do not have that confidence in themselves. They do not have that unwavering conviction to build a truly new society or what Fanon calls a complete creation of new human beings, which is very dangerous. The political systems of government, they, they, they do not get changed. Uh, for instance, the, the tribal authorities uh, established under colonialism, uh, they become fruitful, they, they become a fruitful ground for tribalism and post-colonial ethnic wars. They fail to develop the productive forces locally uh, due to neoliberal uh, commitments to the value of the imperialist and the desire to please the capitalists of the western world so we see a lot of that happening in in, in countries that are, 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 are decolonized in countries that have found independence finally uh, the emphasis is on building national culture the emphasis is on building nation, uh, the, the, the national culture, the renaming of streets and buildings, buildings that they do not build for that matter, uh, national anthems, singing about countries whose economic resources they do not even control or own, sports where people play for countries that they do not even own. Those are the things that we see happening even now in the so-called decolonized countries or states. Fanon says um, true culture should be the result of economic freedom, not the other way around. 
And due to the failure, the native political parties experience in a post-colonial context, they will end up facing revolts from the masses who are now unhappy, who are now disgruntled because they do not actually see the fruits of their struggle when, when they went into revolt, fighting for the decolonization of, the, of their countries. And at first they will try and put the masses to sleep uh, through repetitions of history of decolonization, wars of resistance and stories about heroes and heroines of the war of independence. But as time goes on, that gets tired and the, muscle will, the masses will realize that nothing has changed. They, 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 are, under, they are still under um, a modern colon, uh, colonial system. They are still under poverty. They still do not own land. They still do not own uh, forms of creating economical wealth. But soon, this cannot be. Uh, this this can. It cannot put food on the table of the masses. That is a fact. It cannot bring economical freedom that the masses are hoping and are and are, are, are also aspiring to achieve. As a result, in order to suppress the masses or the, the revolt that now is coming from the, the from from the side of the masses, the colonial government will resort to the same violence and its systems that the colonizers used to conquer and maintain the, 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 the status quo the, as, it, as it were, meaning they will become dictators. Then we see it's now becoming a vicious cycle. People have fought for independence. People have fought to remove the settlers to unseat the settlers and these liberation parties come in and they continue where the, the colonizers left off and the people are still left unhappy and dissatisfied and now they resort to 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 mass revolution and now they, they will be threatened they they, they now they, it is back to a modern colonization now in conclusion Fanon uh, makes us uh, appreciate the mistakes of the liberation movements. And this, this, is, this is a very important critique for our economic emancipation movement, which should never, ever betray struggle. And from Fanon, we appreciate colon, uh, colonization as a pure, hateful system, a pure racist system against black people simply because they are black. We also appreciate that we must be prepared to pursue our economic emancipation by whatever revolutionary means possible, including violence. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, this was uh, my presentation on Fanon's book, uh, The Wretched of the Earth. Now we will continue to look at the questions uh, that were sent by uh, the people who read the books by the members of the hashtag EFF book club. The first question, uh, it does not say who it is from, but the question says, the school of Fanon the thoughts of Fanon. Can you please clarify further as a movement uh, whether we are equating them to the thoughts of uh, Max and Lenin or is Fanon secondary to those? And he says, how do the three schools of thought uh, relate to one another? Uh, Fanon, Franz Fanon, is definitely not secondary. Uh, these schools are all independent. And it, they provide uh, scientific tools from which we source guidance. 
in shaping our, our revolution. They, 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 they all have aspects which help us as a movement understand society in its totality. They give guidance in, in, in formulating progress of the revolution and, 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 and grounding the revolution in, in theory. So it, it will be very incorrect of us uh, to say that Fanon is secondary to Marx or, or to Lenin, and there is no scientific uh, basis to come to that conclusion. Uh, the order um, of words when we say Marxist, Marxist, Leninist, and Fanonian schools of thought does not equate to, to, to hierarchy at all. So that does not say that uh, the, 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 the school of thought, the Fanonian school of thought is, is secondary to the other two schools of thought. Uh, the other question that came in is from Solim Kize. The question says, please elaborate on the Lompen uh, proletariat on their role in the revolution, their advantages and, and, and their weaknesses. Uh, according to Fanon, we know that Lompen, Lompen means uninterested in revolutionary advancement and uh, proletariat is, is, is a working class. So Lompen proletariat uh, they are unorganized, they are unpolitical, and they, uh, they are a society that is not political. They, they do not have interest in, 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 in revolutionary advancement. And according to Fanon, he says the characteristics of, of a, a Lampen uh, pro proletariat is that they lack political consciousness, they are ignorant, they, they are ideologically weak, and they are spiritually unstable, unstable. So that that is a group of people that we, as a movement, you cannot rely on. So that that is that is the question. Th those are the questions that I uh, I wanted to deal with. There was a last another question that came in uh, that was asking in terms of in terms of the land uh, it says that it is from primrose sonti it says what is fanon's stand on land restoration to their previous or rightful owners um we cannot stress enough the importance of land ownership and as fanon has clearly stated categorically so in the book that owning land is important and it is one of the most important forms of taking back your dignity, is taking back your land from the settler or for your colonizer. So it is very important, even according to Fanon, it is very important even to us as a movement, as the EFF, uh, land uh, expropriation, taking back the land to its rightful owners, it is very, very important. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for spending this hour with me as we dealt with this very interesting book. And I trust that, I truly hope that uh, even the people who read the book for the first time uh, now have a clearer understanding of the book. And even those who have not started reading the book, I will encourage that let, let us read the book uh, even you can read it over and over so that you get the clear understanding of what Fenon, the message that Fenon is trying to send to, to, to us in terms of decolonization. And um, we are done with the book and in the next three days uh, we, there will be the, 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 the fifth reading will be on the frequently asked questions on the ex appropriation of land uh, with, uh, without compensation. Uh, there, there will be communication on uh, who will be doing the live session on, on that. And once again, 
let us remember uh, that due to COVID-19, the coronavirus, we are still under lockdown and we are encouraged uh, by the EFF that we adhere to the regulations of, of, of the lockdown. We stay at home. We take care of ourselves. The children must stay away from the streets. We must not allow the children to play in the streets. The only time you need to go out is when you go to buy necessities or go to a doctor or anything like that. Please practice social distancing. Please remember to always wash your hands with water and soap. And let's do this and we will surely win the battle against the coronavirus. Thank you very much. Aluta Continua.